Ta. Today we are going to discuss in the modern Indian history later Mughals. Later Mughals means Mughals those who ruled after the death of the Aurangzeb from 1707 to 1858. These are called as Later Mughals. Later Mughals comes under the uh, comes from the 1707 to 1858. They are after the Aurangzeb. After the Aurangzeb. Later Mughals. 1707 to 1858. After the Aurangzeb, Aurangzeb's son Bahadur Shah came, one came to the throne. Bahadur Shah one. Bahadur Shah one ruled from 1707 to Bahadur Shah one ruled from 1707 to 1712. He was originally called as Muijab son of the Aurangzeb ruled from 1707 to 1712 after the Bahadur Shah one Jahandar Shah Jahandar Shah ruled from 1712 to 1713 he ruled only one year after the Jahan Shah Farukshia Farukshia he ruled from 1713 to 1719 this period after the death of the Farukshiya, Rafi Uddha Rajat, Rafi Uddha Rajat, he ruled few days in the nine, year 1719. After this, Rafi Uddaula, Rafi Uddaula, he ruled 1719 few months. After the Rafi Uddaula, Mahamasa Rangila. Mahamasha Rangila. Mahamasha Rangila ruled from 1719 to 1748 period. After the Mahamasha, Ahamasha, 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 he ruled from 1748 to 1754. After the Ahamasha, Alangir II. Alangir II. Alangir II ruled from 1754 to 1759. After the Alangir II, after the Alangir II, Shah Alam II, Shah Alam II, Shah Alam II ruled from 1759 to 1806. After the Shah Alam to Akbar Shah to Akbar Shah to Akbar Shah to he ruled from 1806 to 1837. After the Akbar Shah to Bahadur Shah to Bahadur Shah to he ruled from 1837 to 1858. So, later Mughals from Bahadur Shah 1 to the Bahadur Shah 2 period. Farukshiya, Rafi Uddha Rajat, Rafi Uddha Ola. These three candidates, Farukshiya, Rafi Uddha Rajat, Rafi Uddha Ola, these three were, even Muhammad Shah, these four rulers were made by Syed brothers. During that period, Syed brothers, Syed brothers. These Syed brothers, they played the role of oh, king makers. They played the role of king makers. These are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. One cricket team, 11 members, ruled from 1707 to 1858. 150 years of the latter Mughal period. 150 years of latter Mughal period, 11 rulers they ruled. Within span of 50 years, drastically many rulers they were changed. Many rulers they were changed. Okay. Coming to this point, next to one by one, we will discuss one by one. First, Bahadur Shah one. Bahadur Shah one, he ruled from 1707 to 
1712, after the death of the Aurangzeb, he was originally called as Muizjam. The original name of the Bahadur Shah one is called as Muizjam. Muizjam he emerged as victorious in the war of succession. After the death of the Aurangzeb, even Aurangzeb came to the throne with the succession war. Succession war. War of succession means war for the seat, war for the throne. So Muizjam, after the small outbreak of oh, this war of succession, he came to the throne in 1797. Muizjam came to the throne on the name of the Bahadur Shah one at the age of 67 years. 67 years, young boy. In the last days of oh, our last days of Aurangzeb, in the last days of the Aurangzeb, war of succession broke out among the three sons of the Aurangzeb, Prince Muizjam, Muhammad Ajam and Kam Bakshi. This Muhammad Ajam, Kam Bakshi, these two were killed by the Muizjam. Muizjam, he came to the throne on the name of Bahadur Shah I, on the name of Bahadur Shah I. Muizjam defeated and killed these two. Muizjam defeated Muhammad Ajam at Jauza in 1798. Kambaks was died, Kambaks was defeated and killed at Hyderabad in 1709. So both were killed by the Muizjam. Muizjam ruled just five years, 1707 to 1712. So Bahadur Shah one period, whenever Bahadur Shah one came to the throne, Bahadur Shah one came to the throne during this period, the famous kingdom in the South India Deccan that was a Maratha kingdom. Maratha kingdom. So coming to the point of the South India, this area was under the control of the Marathas. This area was under the control of the Marathas. The remaining area, this area was under the control of the Mughals. This was directly under the control of the Mughals. During the time of the, during the time of oh, Aurangzeb, during the time of the Aurangzeb period, coming to the point of the Aurangzeb period, Aurangzeb, he defeated Ahmadnagar Sultans, Ahmadnagar, he defeated Ahmadnagar, Bijapur and Golconda. All these areas were completely defeated by the Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb completely defeated Deccan except Marathas. So all these kingdoms completely occupied by the Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb appointed a governor for the Deccan, but Marathas were powerful of that period. During this period, in 1689, Battle of Mangalais, Battle of Mangaleswar, Battle of, sorry, Sangameswar. In the Battle of Sangameswar, Marathas were defeated. By this time, Maratha peace, Maratha Chhatrapati was, oh, just wait, I will write again. Seventeen, sorry, sixteen eighty-nine. Battle of Battle of Sangameswar. This in the Battle of Sangameswar, this occurred between this occurred between the Sivaji son Sembhaji versus Aurangzeb. Sembhaji versus Aurangzeb. That is Sambazi Marathas in this battle. Maratha king, Maratha Chhatrapati, Sambazi was completely defeated. Sambazi was killed by the Aurangzeb. Sambazi killed Sambazi's son Sahu. Sambazi's son Sahu put into the jail. He was put into the jail of prison of the Maratha. Sorry. Prison of the Mughals. Sahu, he was originally 
prince of marathas originally he was prince of marathas he was next to ruler after the sambazi but sambazi killed sahu was sent to the jail in 17 1689 mm. this period 1689 to 1707 sahu was under the control of the moguls but uh, 1707 whenever muizam became the ruler muizam that is uh, also called as bahadur shah one bahadur shah one whenever he came to the throne he released sahu from the jail released sahu from the jail who was in the jail from and uh, from the 1689 so marathas with the marathas bahadur shah continued friendship maha ma, mar in the maha sorry bahadur shah continued friendship with marathas this you remember next bahadur shah one he defeated sikh rulers but with the sikh with the sikh bahadur shah continued rivalry rivalry with the sikh bahadur shah one period 1709 1709 bahadur shah defeated last sikh guru last sikh guru guru govind singh and he guru govind singh was taken to south india dakkan by the bahadur shah one but he guru govind singh died at nanded 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 in the nanded guru govind singh died he was last guru 10th guru 10th guru was the last guru of the six after the 10th guru banda bahadur he became leader of the six banda bahadur he was uh, defeated by the moguls at uh, lohagar lohagar mogal forces lohagar bahadur shah one defeated banda bahadur at lohagar and reoccupied this uh, lohagar port and mogal forces bahadur shah one died in 1712 27th february sydney owner sydney won he write about the bahadur shah he was the last to great emperor that means uh, he was the last true emperor of the moguls who anything favorable can be said henceforth rapid and complete abasement and practical dissolutions of the empire are typified in the capacity and political insignificance of its sovereign that means he was last sovereign ruler he was last sovereign ruler he was last important ruler of the moguls and also we can say first mogal emperor bahadur shah one first mogal emperor bahadur shah one he was last independent ruler of the moguls he was last independent ruler of the moguls that you can remember he died in 27th february 1712 after that he adapted more tol- tolerant attitude towards the hindu rajas and uh, reversed some of the narrow minded people he, he reversed the narrow mindedness of the aurangzeb he did not follow completely aurangzeb he abolished jizya aurangzeb reimposed jizya that was uh, withdrawn to take withdrawn by the not completely abolished withdrawn he did not collected jizya a independence of mewar and marwar these two were acknowledged by the bahadur shah one he tried to consolidate rebellions of the six by making peace with guru gobind singh but oh, i already told to you 1709 he called guru gobind singh both were went to the nanded there he uh, died he made peace with the bundela chiefs bundela chief chatrasan and jat chief churaman bundela chief chatrasan jat chief churaman these two were made talks with peaceful talks with the bahadur shah one 
this Choraman, Jat Choraman, he was called as, remember Choraman of Jats, he was called as Plato of Jat, Plato of Jat. Choraman title is the Plato of the Jat. Here there was a deterioration in the field of the administration. The Mughal historians Kafi Khan. Kafi Khan, he wrote history books during the time of the Aurangzeb period. Because Aurangzeb, he banned to write history books. Kafi Khan, he secretly write the book. And he gave the title of Sahib Bakedar, Bekadar. Mughal historian Kafi Khan gave the title to the Title to the Bahadur Savan is Sahi Bekadhar. He granted Maratha Sardas, Sardes Muki granted. Sardes Muki means collection of tax, collection of tax from other, other forts, other than the, other forts, other than the Mughals, sorry, other than the Sivaji. That is Sardes Muki and also Chaut. Sardes Muki and Chaut can be collected by the Mughals mouth. Sorry. Sardes Muki. Remember. Sardes Muki and Chaut. These two allowed to collect by the Marathas from the Mughal territories. From the Mughal territories. So he granted that. But they did not completely satisfied. Marathas did not completely satisfied because Shahu did not, Shahu he did not recognize as a king. Shahu did not recognize as a king. They did not recognize as a Maratha Chhatrapati by Bahadur Shah one. Bahadur Shah one did not recognize Shahu as a king because Shahu released 1707. Whenever Sahu released in 1707, Sahu made war with Tarabai, that is war of succession between the Tarabai and Sahu. In this war of succession, 1707, war of succession, Tarabai was defeated, Sahu became the Chhatrapati. This was not accepted by the Mughals, that is Bahadur Shah one. Bahadur Shah one, he did not accepted Shahu as a ruler, Shahu as a Chhatrapati. So because of this, Marathas did not satisfied. This is what happened. During his reign, the remnants of the royal treasury amounting 1707 to same as 3 crores of the rupees were exhausted. That was exhausted. 1707, he died after the death of the Bahadur Shah one, Jahandar Shah came to the throne. He ruled only one year. Jahandar Shah also came to the war of succession. Jahandar Shah, he was supported by the Julfikar Khan. Julfikar Khan, he was a powerful noble. Julfikar Khan, he was a powerful noble. Julfikar Khan supported Jahandar Shah because Julfikar Khan he was he was close friend of the Lal Kunwar. Lal Kunwar he Lal Kunwar was wife of Jahandar Shah. Lal Kunwar she was wife of Jahandar Shah. She was dominated by the mistress. Sorry, he was dominated by his wife. He was dominated by his wife. Lal Kunwar. Lal Kunwar. This Lal Kunwar, she was wife of Jahandar Shah. Wife of Jahandar Shah. Lal Kunwar dominated by Jahandar Shah. That is one thing. And Lal Kunwar, she adopted the style of Nur Jahan. She imitated the style of Nur Jahan during the time of the Nur Jahan period. Completely, uh, sorry, completely Jahangir put aside into the administration. Nur Jahan 
has taken the complete administration same like that lal kunwar she taken the administration but uh, lal kunwar lal kunwar's boyfriend male friend that is zulfikar khan there is a friendship between zulfikar khan and lal kunwar so because of this friendship zulfikar khan helped to the jahangir shah so originally these two were the original rulers these two were the original rulers during the time of the jahangir shah period administration was virtually in the hands of zulfikar khan jahangir shah was the first later mughal ruler who came to the throne with the help of the noble no other rulers like bahadur shah one he came to the throne on his own but uh, here jahangir shah he was the first mughal ruler who came to the throne with the help of a noble so the policies of aurangzeb was reversed here he did not follow the policies of aurangzeb in that uh, way in 1712 in the year 1712 jizya tax was completely abolished by jahangir shah jizya tax was completely ab abolished by the jahangir shah remember 712 ad 712 ad jizya tax was introduced by muhammad bin qasim muhammad bin qasim after the 100 years 1712 jizya tax was completely abolished by jahangir shah mughal emperor jahangir shah mughal emperor so he followed the complete reverse policies of aurangzeb during this period jai singh of ambar has taken the title of mirza raja sawai and mirza raja sawai he was appointed as a governor of malwa adis singh of marwar adis singh of marwar he was awarded as a title maharaja governor of the gujarat mirza raja sawai jai singh of ambar jai singh of ambar and ajit singh these two made friendship with the Brit, uh, with the moguls and do, it was at this moment he also continued friendship with the hindu rulers shah was granted chautan sadyasmukhi of the dakkan to collect chautan sadyasmukhi this would be collected by the mogal officers will be surrendered to the marathas chautan sadyasmukhi allowed to the marathas but that will be collected by the mogal officers and submitted to the handover to the marathas zulfikar khan he started evil practices of isra and revenue farming these evil practices were started by the zulfikar khan so zulfikar khan pacified choraman of jhat and also chatrasal bandela bundela these to become rivals of that period only towards banda and the sikh did continued the old policy of the suppression zulfikar khan made attempt to improve the financial status of the empire reckless growth of because of this reckless growth of jagirs and officers were started during this reign jahangir shah violence and uh, debauchery had in full way during the reign of the during the reign of the jahangir shah period violence become increased debauchery that means illegal activities are become very full way of this period so kunwar khan says about the reign of the old kunwar khan he was a historian he said about the rule of the he said about the rule of jahangir shah the old dwelt in the eagles nest the old dwelt in the eagles nest and the crow took the place of the nightingale remember here owl dwelt in the eagle's nest and the crow 
that uh, occupied the place of the nightingale completely debauchery illegal activities are continuing that system jahandar sarain came to end in january 1730 he was uh, when he was defeated by agra at farukshi farukshiyar farukshiyar was helped by the sayed brothers the sayed brothers was abdullah khan and hussein ali khan abdullah khan and hussein ali khan helped to the farukshiyar i already told to you these two are the continued as a king makers these two are king makers these two are the king makers after this farukshiya 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 he farukshiya he came to the throne with the help of sayed brothers with the help of sayed brothers so during this period the decision of the sayed brothers was more important of farukshiyar period sayed brothers already i said to you they are called as king makers so sayed brothers dominated the mogal court from 1713 to 1719 this period the elder brother abdullah khan was wazir elder brother i among the sayed brothers elder one abdullah khan he was wazir and younger one hussein ali khan he was mir bakshi originally farukshiyar he was homosex farukshiyar was homosex he fell in love with hussein khan hussein ali khan and there are some close relation between the hussein ali khan and farukshiyar because he was homosexual Sayed brothers belong to the they belong to the Hindustani group in that period Irani Turani Hindustani these were most important people of that period these were raised during the time of the uh, Jahandar Shah period Jahandar Shah period these were become very powerful and there occurred clash among these people hindustani group sayed brothers and uh, irani group was led by the chinglish khan chinglish khan he was also called as nizamul mulk later period he was also called as nizamul mulk he was appointed by the nizamul mulk he was appointed by the uh, farukshiyar as a governor of six provinces of the dakkan originally nizamul mulk he continued as a governor of the dakkan later period in 1724 1724 he declared independence in the hyderabad hyderabad became independence during that period zulfikar khan trustlessly murdered by the farukshiyar farukshiyar ordered to kill he was trustlessly murdered banda bahadur sikh leader Banda Bahadur was also captured there was continued rivalry between the Sikhs and Mughals Banda Bahadur was defeated Banda Bahadur was captured and he was executed in 1715 during the time of the Farukshiyar period 1719 Hussein Ali made settlement with Balaji Viswanath they made settlement with Balaji Viswanath Hussein Ali Hussein Ali made settlement with the Balaji Viswanath Balaji Viswanath of this period he was Maratha Peshwa from 1713 to 1720 Maratha Peshwa <coughs> So Sayed brothers adopted the policy of religious tolerance because they were the Hindustani they abolished the jizya and pilgrim tax from the number of places beginning the struggle between the emperor and farukshiyar 
seven Farukshia did not accepted the policies of Sayyid brothers. That's why there occurred clash between the Sayyid brothers and Farukshia, Emperor and Farukshia. So he remained a playing in the hands of the English and Marathas. In 1719, Sayyid brothers they deposed Farukshia and they killed the Farukshia. Publicly they killed the Farukshia. After the killing the Farukshia, Sayyid brothers made Arafi Uddha Rajat to the throne. He also died within four months. And then Rafi Uddha became the latter Mughal on the title of the Shah Jahan II. He came to the throne on the title of the Shah Jahan II. But he also died. He also died. After the death of the Rafi Uddha Rajat, Rafi Uddha Muhammad Shah became the ruler. Muhammad Shah got thrown with the help of the Sayyid brothers. Initially, he came to the throne by taking the help of the Sayyid brothers. Originally, he was called as a Rastan Rustum Al Sari. Rastun Akbar. Rast Roshan Akhtar. His original name, Roshan Akhtar. He was very good in the dance. Especially, he was a Kathak dancer. Kathak dancer. He was the most pleasure loving ruler and is therefore he was called as Rangila. Rangila used to make a dance with the woman, dancing woman and making, uh, sorry, having drink, drinking wine, making dance with women. He adapted for wine and women. That's why he was called as Rangila, joyful life. He continued the joyful life. Conspiracy, conspiracy was to hatch the nobles. Uh, here there occurred a clash between the Sayyid brothers and Muhammad Shah. Muhammad Shah, he wanted to kill the Sayyid brothers. He took the help of the Nizam al Mulk. Finally, one of the Sayyid brothers, they killed 1720 in the hands of the, in the hands of Nizam al Mulk. Later period, another died. By 1720, both were killed. Both were killed. Nizam al Mulk became the Wazir. Whenever Sayyid brothers were killed by the Nizam al Mulk, then Nizam al Mulk he became Wazir in 1722. So he started vigorous attempts for the making of the administration. But Nizam al Mulk did not uh, do that. Nizam al Mulk finally, 1724, he marched to the Hyderabad and he made Hyderabad as an independent kingdom. During this period, during the Muhammad Shah period, more independent kingdoms were established. Like Bengal became independent, Hyderabad became independent, Awud became independent, Karnataka became independent. All these are the independent kingdoms existed during the time of the Muhammad Shah period. Coming to the point of the Jats, Jats also became under the Badam Singh, established themselves in the district of the Agra and Madura area. Jats, they become independent. Jat state was founded with the capital of the Bharatpur by Badan Singh. Badan Singh. In the Gangetic Dome, Rohilas of Rohilas of Katihar. Rohilas of Katihar and Bangas Patan of Farukabad. These also established independent kingdom. Wherever leaders are there, all the leaders they declare independence. So Nizam al Mulk departure was symbolic of the fight of loyalty and the virtue of the empire. That was happened during that period. And Muhammad Shah, long reign, 30 years reign of the Muhammad Shah. It was a last chance to save the kingdom, but he failed to save the kingdom. During his period, 1739, Nadir Shah invaded. Nadir Shah, he was the Persian emperor. Nadir Shah was called as Napoleon of the Persia, Napoleon of Iran. Nadir Shah, he defeated Muhammad Shah and Nadir Shah captured Delhi. Sometime Nadir Shah, he imprisoned Muhammad Shah. He stayed two years in the Delhi. Later, he plundered the Delhi and he went off from the Delhi.
So Nadesha's total plunder, according to some expenses, he, uh, some uh, estimations, it was 70 crores. He also carried the famous Kohinu diamond and also uh, peacock throne, which was a jewelry, the which made with jewelry. These two were taken away to the Persia. So Nadesha invaded twice. While he started second time, 1748, uh, second trial during this period, finally Muhammad Shah died by this time. Muhammad Shah died by this time. After the Muhammad Shah, death of the Muhammad Shah, Rustum Ali, the author of the Tariki Hind, he says that Muhammad Shah was negligent of his duties. Even he did not know what he had the duties of uh, perform. What to do? Even he did not know what to do. He completely enjoyed. He completely continued the joyful life. That was the statement given by the Rustumali, the author of Tariki Hind. After the Mahamasha, Ahamasha came to the throne. Ahamasha born to the Mahamasha through the dancing girl called Udambai. She was a dancer, Udambai, Hindu. So in his reign, Udambai, her paramount Javed Khan, these two become Udambai, Javed Khan. These two interfere in the administration. These two become pivot of the administration. Sabdar Jang, the Nawab of Aud, become Wazir of the Emperor. He became the Wazir of the Emperor of that period. After the Ahmad Shah. Ahmad Shah period started the Ahmad Shah Abdali invasions and uh, Alangi 2 period they were continued. Ahmad Shah Abdali he started invasions after the end of Nadir Shah invasions from Persia. He was Afghan ruler. He was Afghan ruler. The Marathas were invited. Was he to save the uh, Mughal Empire? In 1759 Alangi II was murdered by the Imad Ulmulk. He was another wazir, Imad Ulmulk. Imad Ulmulk, originally he was a grandson of Nizam Ulmulk. Remember, he was grandson of Nizam Ulmulk. And he was a powerful, powerful wazir. He killed the emperor. He killed the emperor. He murdered the emperor. His wazir after the Sabdar Singh Imad ul Mulk blinded him and placed Alangir II to the throne. So Ahmad Shah Abdali invaded during the reign of the Alangir II period. Alangir II, after the Alangir II, next Shah Alam II. Shah Alam II, Shah Alam II he was a son of Alangir II. Originally he was called as Ali Gau, Ali Gauhar. Shah Alam to remain exile for 12 years from almost from 60, 17 sorry almost from 1760 to 1772 this period he lived in the exile that means uh, he lived at uh, Allahabad fort originally Allahabad fort because he was afraid of he was afraid of the Imad Ulmulk. He was afraid of the Imad ul Mulk because Imad ul Mulk he killed Alangir and also he killed Ahmasa. Imad ul Mulk killed two emperors. Two emperors were killed by the Imad ul Mulk because of the afraid of Imad ul Mulk. Shah Alam II he left the throne. And he was away from the throne in the Allahabad. So while he was there in the Allahabad, he made friendship with Mir Qasim and Suja Uddawla. Mir Qasim, he was ex-Bengal Nawab. Suja Uddawla, he was Avud Nawab. These two made friendship with uh, Shah Alam II. Shah Alam II, Mir Qasim, Suja Uddawla, these three declared war against the British at Battle of Bakshar. Finally, these three were defeated in the Battle of Bakshar in 1764. 
So he lived several years, I told to you, he lived several years at Allahabad as a prisoner of the East India Company. Uh, 1772, he, with the help of the Maharaja Sindhya, he escaped. British under the Lord Lake during the time of Lord Wellesley period, during the time of the Lord Wellesley as uh, Governor General of Bengal from 17, Governor of the Bengal from, sorry, 1798 to 1805, during this period, Lord Lake, he occupied Delhi, he captured Delhi in 1803. Whenever he occupied Delhi, by this time, Shah Alam II was Mughal Emperor. This Shah Alam II became young pensioner under the British. He became pensioner under the British. He was taking pension. And finally, he was killed by, Shah Alam II was killed by Ghulam Khadri in 1806. English concluded a treaty of Allahabad. That was also treaty of Allahabad in 1765. Because of the treaty of Allahabad, British they got Diwani rights in the Bengal, Bihar, Varissa area and British accepted to give 20 lakhs rupees per annum to the Shah Alam II. So during his exile, Shah Alam II was placed in the throne of the Delhi. Shah Jahan III, originally he was called as Shah Jahan III, placed in the Delhi throne. So Ahmad Shah Abdali crossed India for the fifth time during this period 1760 1761 battle of four, third battle of panipat between the ahmad shah abdali and marathas marathas were completely defeated during the post panipat period nazim khan rahela until the death of 1770 was dictator of delhi he was the dictator of delhi Shah Alam II, he was blinded by his wazir in 1788. After that, he continued. Akbar II, Akbar II ruled from 1806 to 1837. He confirmed upon the Mohan Rai, Raja of Mohan Rai, originally from 1803 onwards, from 1803 onwards, Mughal Emperor became pensioner of the British. British were giving pension to the Mughal Emperor. He was not getting pension. That's why he sent Raja Ram Mohan Rai to the British, Britain, to get the pension. But finally, Raja Ram Mohan Rai died in 1833 at uh, Bristol in the London. Bristol in the London. After this, the last ruler, Bahadur Shah II. Bahadur Shah II, he was last Mughal Emperor. He was also known as Bahadur Shah Jafar. He was, he did not have any land, even finally after the death of the Bahadur Shah II, he did not have land to bury him. So he took part of the revolt 1857, during the time of the 1857 revolt, he was, Bahadur Shah II was the Mughal Emperor, Bahadur Shah II was declared as a national emperor by the revoltists, finally he was captured, sent to the Rangoon. He died in 1862 at Rangoon. By this ended the Mughal rulers. This is about the Latin Mughals from Bahadur Shah 1 to the Bahadur Shah 2 period. In the next class, we will discuss socio-cultural awakening after the 1857 revolt. Okay. Good luck to you.